first question for you. Who am I speaking to? What do I call you? CM Punk, Mr. Money in the Bank, uh, Phil Brooks. What do I call you? Uh, uh, Mr. Amateur, I guess. So you can call me Phil. You can call me Punk. Whatever, whatever you feel. Well, Doesn't what, matter. What, what do you? What do, what do people outside of your uh, your ring life call you? Like you know, your buddies. What do they call you? I'm not saying I'm your buddy yet. Uh, uh, to a lot of my buddies, I'm Punker. I'm okay. Punk. Yeah. Punker, Punk. So we know your name. We know you signed a multi-deal, uh, a multi-fight deal with the UFC, and we know that your debut will happen in late 2015. Let us allow you right now to hype the fight for you. Take a look. The UFC and Phil Brooks invite you to join us for the mystery fight of the decade. Who will he face? Superstars want a piece of him. Will it be Jose Canseco? He's done MMA and he's hungry after losing a battle to a gun. Other superstar candidates include Drake, 0-1 after a tough loss to Diddy, Bieber, who's reeling from an Orlando Bloom KO and already talking trash. What'd you say? Oh, with Brooks recently going vegan, you know who wants a piece of him? Hello, may I come in? I am Chef Boyardi. Chef Boyardi, Phil Brooks, will it happen? Join us for a fight you can't miss on a day we can't tell you against an opponent we don't know in a weight class to be determined. May or may not ever happen. So what do you think, you and the chef? Uh, sure. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll fight the chef. I'll fight you. I'll fight anybody. <laughs> well, no, you're not you're not going to fight me. Uh, have you actually ever? Uh, and if you were fighting me, I would say going in in the news conference, I would say I've never taken a real punch in the face. Uh, I hope you don't find this disrespectful, but have you actually taken a real punch? You're going to ask me if I've ever taken a real punch in the face? Yeah. You obviously hadn't seen some of the guys I was wrestling in the WWE. Yes, I have taken a real punch in no, the face. But, but wouldn't you agree that that, that is different that, than being in the octagon, say, with the guy who is punching to hurt? It's not part of putting on a show? Again, you probably haven't seen some of the guys I wrestled no, I with have. in I the have WWE. Seen it. Uh, okay, well then, then you know I've been punched in the face before, and not just on TV. I've been, I've been in my fair share of uh, unfortunate scraps outside of a... Uh, an, an arena and not in front of a TV camera. I've been I've been socked in the face. It sucks. But now you're signing up for it. Here's what I find uh, to be interesting. Dana has, to some extent, I think, protected you, saying that he wants a fighter to basically have fought one, two, or three times. Um, is that something that you worked in advance so you wouldn't feel pressure to fight a guy like Nate Diaz? Eh? No, uh, we never had a conversation about um, who I would fight or what their experience level would level would be. So uh, that was that was Dana talking. So so what if Dana said, you know what, you can fight the person that you believe uh, you would like to fight against. Nate Diaz called you out. If they offered you a chance to fight him at any weight, so you're heavier than him, you can fight at that. Would you fight a guy with Nate Diaz's experience? Look, this this is where uh, you know things things will get said out of context. I don't think I don't think Nate called me out. I think what Nate did was express his opinion on the UFC signing me and me fighting in the UFC and I respect his opinion. I'm still a Nate Diaz fan. Uh, I, I watched him fight last Saturday and I'll watch him fight next time he fights. Uh, who I fight isn't 100% up to me. I don't think it's up 100% up to any fighter. That's what the Joe Silvas of the world are for. Um, it, it, would I fight Nate Diaz? This is where you take this out of context. Yeah, I would fight anybody, uh, given the proper time to prepare for it. Uh, would that be a wise decision at this juncture in my career? Probably not. But I would also fight Anderson Silva tomorrow if you paid me the correct amount of money to do so. Okay, so there, there's no out of context here. I mean, your point is that you're not looking to be protected by Dana. You're not looking to um, jump in with someone that they know you have a great chance at beating. You will go um, where the company wants you to go. Yeah, this is, uh, this is a challenge, and it's a challenge that I signed up for. So taking it easy doesn't really make sense. You know, I, I got to put the miles in and I got to do the work to prepare and I'm not afraid of that. But once I get there and once I fight, the fight's a fight. See, I'm really interested, not just in terms of the ring versus the octagon, and obviously you haven't been in the octagon, but in terms of the, the life of a wrestler versus the life of an MMA fighter, which one do you think is more dangerous to your health, the life of a wrestler or the life of a USC guy? Uh, well, the UFC has a referee to stop a fight in case something goes wrong. 
uh, and wrestling more often than not, you you break something, you hurt something, you finish the match, you keep going. That's the way that works there. The show must go on. So I, I would take that because, I mean, it, like my guess would be, on, you know, on the surface, everyone would say UFC, but I would say WWE, the long-term effects would be dramatically greater than UFC. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. You're a hockey fan, right? Uh, yeah, huge hockey fan. Okay, so huge hockey fan. So who is, uh, and I know you're a Blackhawk fan, who is the greatest hockey player in the world right now? Oh, man. Greatest hockey player in the world. Uh, you know, I've always been drawn to, like, the gritty defensive men. Um, so there's guys... Obviously, I'm biased, Blackhawks fan, mm -hmm. so uh, Duncan Keith is my guy. I, I think he's amazing. Obviously, he won the Norris Trophy last year, so, you know, there's, there's facts to back that up. But, uh, you know, I, I think the world appreciates more of the flashy hockey player, like the forwards, the, you know, the, the Patrick Canes or the Jonathan Taves, the Sidney Crosbys of the world. Mm -hmm. Uh, Sidney Crosby's still up there, I think, definitely. He's, he's kind of filled that, that gap that Gretzky left when he, uh, when he retired. Phil, I got to tell you, I would have bet a million dollars, which perhaps wouldn't be enough to get you in to fight Nate Diaz, but I would have bet that you were going to pick Jonathan Taves. I was 100% sure that you would do that because there's this tug of war between Taves people and Crosby people. We're going to take a break. When we return later on in the show, will you tell us what the CM stands for? Sure. All right, we'll find if you out. Ask nice. All right. Back with Phil Brooks, the man previously known as CM Punk. The Lansy Awards, Phil Brooks, you want to know this, are tomorrow. The toughest category to win best censored moment. Now, I want you to listen to this because you will recognize some of the nominees' voices. Take a look. And if you want the answer to that question, viewers, call her on her personal and private cell phone number. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? You, you're a fanboy. Most miserable experience of my life. Yeah, well, I when he was with Chicago. I could give Spenny the right now. Bob Arum is a piece of We're not putting that anywhere on the TV. Uh, uh, I, I have to tell you, the most censored item that we have ever done was King Mo and Rampage Jackson. They fought for 20 minutes after we were off the air, and you couldn't use a word of it. Pretty wild. I love it. I love it. So, Chael is, I, I know that you know Chael pretty well. Is it true that you called him and offered to fight him uh, early on in your UFC career? No, <laughs> that's not true. That's Chael being Chael. Uh, when, when I was serious about getting into fighting, I would talk to Chael about it. And, um, you know, Chael has an imagination. He likes, to, <laughs> he likes to play with you guys, I think, a lot more than people realize. Uh, I talked to Chael about you know, an idea I had about maybe having him, uh, you know, corner me or, 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 you know, be my wrestling coach and stuff like that. And he, he took it to the, the next level. So you, uh, you have said regarding the WWE that there's no, this is a quote, no working relationship and there never will be again. You know that there's almost no one who has walked away from the WWE or WWF back in the day and not gone back. Everyone, it seems. And one of your heroes, Bret Hart, went back, even though the blood was so terrible between them. Mm-hmm. Is that a question? Yeah, the question was, how, how do you know? Actually, I think if you played it back, there would be a question. How do you know? How can you say that you're not going to go back when everyone, it seems, goes back? Uh, well, I, I, I don't know, um, you know, because I can't tell the future, but I, I, know, I know myself and I know what's in here, uh, and I have no desire to, to go back. I don't think they have a desire to see me back either, so, you know, we've, everybody's happy. Yeah, but you know what? I mean, what, it, it all comes full circle, and according to Vince, it's just business. I mean, this, this is a guy who has kissed and made up with people that, I mean, like in the case of Bret Hart, I mean, Bret felt like he killed his brother, yet eventually, you know, Bret went back. So, I mean, quote unquote, mm -hmm. just business seems to be very powerful. Sure, but, uh, you know, my integrity is pretty powerful as well. Your wife works for WWE still, right? Yes, she does. Is that, how, how do you find that, given your public feud um, with, with Vince and how you really called them out uh, about the medical care that they offer their people? Um, I mean, what's it like for your wife working mm. for a company? See, 
this this is this is taken out of context. I didn't I didn't mean to call anybody out. I simply told my story. I told the truth, and I told people what happened to me. Uh, it wasn't to call anybody out. I'm a passionate guy who lost uh, the passion to do his job, and you know, uh, my intent wasn't to call anybody out. Um, I, I've had plenty of conversations about my with my wife about her working there, and if she wants to work there, more power to her. You know, like it, we have separate careers, you know, and we'll continue to have separate careers, uh, and we're stronger for that, for having understanding and, and supporting each other. Now, 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 you say that you didn't call them up, but I mean, to, to be fair to my question, you did point out the fact that they are in, in, they have been irresponsible with the treatment of concussions, that they do what's best for them, and you pointed out the fact that you had a staph infection that went misdiagnosed to the point where you could have died, correct? Mm-hmm. So, so you, you may not be, you may not have done it for the reason of calling them up, but this is a terrible reflection of the WWE. I mean, I'm just, I just recanted my experiences. It's what? something I would love to move on from. You know, I, I'm not, I'm not shy about my past, and I, I don't regret anything. But like, you know, I'm, I'm here to talk about my future in UFC. Right, but I mean, I, I would say that those points are extraordinarily important for the world that we live in today with concussions and the issues that exist, uh, not just in WWE, but UFC and the NHL, which you're a fan of, and the NFL as well. But before we go to break, what, is, what does Vince think of the UFC? Everybody wonders how much he sees them as the enemy. Mm, uh, I don't. I, I can't really say what Vince thinks about anything. Um, you know, you'd have to ask him about that. I know he doesn't view them as competition. At least that's what he publicly says. But that's about as as much as I can guess the opinion of Vince's uh, on the UFC. Stay tuned. Uh, more with CM Punk. More with uh, Phil Brooks next. This OTR classic moment is brought to you by the Keg Steakhouse and Bar. So you're leaving now because of what reason? Apparently, that is the end of a man that we were actually really looking forward to talking to, Chael Sonnen. I have to say, 3,000 shows after we started, it's the first time that anyone has ever left. So that was your, your buddy Chael who uh, got up and walked off. I, I, I'm trying to get a reading on this. Uh, are, are you kind of pissed off with the questions that I've asked? Uh, they're very wrestling centric and you know, I'm here to talk about UFC, but no, you're, you're doing your job and now, now you're asking me if I'm pissed off. So now, you know, I'm, you have an agenda. It's okay. Oh, I don't have an agenda, but I mean, what am I going to ask you about UFC? You're not a UFC fighter. You don't have a fight scheduled. You don't like, we don't know anything about that. So if you were doing this interview, would you be asking you about right, and you're, and you're, and you're laughing about that and you, you have me on your show. This is who's not laughing? you on my no, show. No, you, you, no, but who's laughing? You, you produced an entire segment prior to me coming on, uh, making a joke of this situation. And I understand that and I appreciate your point of view. Well, I mean, Making a joke of it? I, I well, think, I mean, what? I, I mean, for a guy, let's face it, for a guy who just came from this world, which per, perhaps I'm not supposed to mention, the wrestling world, I mean, tongue-in-cheek does exist. I mean, you can't take yourself that seriously that we can't have some fun joking about perhaps you fighting Justin Bieber. I mean, you got to believe we're not being serious when we say that. Uh, no, that, and like I said, that's fine. I'm not upset about it. As you, your demeanor off the camera is... 100% different than when it is when you know you're being recorded and you're interviewing me. It's just, it, it, it's funny to me. Okay, so, so I, I'm interested in that because I've never heard that before. How is, how, what is my... Of course you are. No, but what is my demeanor off camera that's different than how I am right now? You're, you're, you try to be friendly. You try to act like you're my friend. And then when you get me on camera... You try to act like the cool kid in school, well, and I understand that. That's cool. You, you know, asked no, me I, off camera if if we saw each other at US, UFC 182, if I was going to big league you. Big time was the term. So you want to play in? You want to play innocent and defensive when what, you're I, not on camera, and then when you get on camera, you want to you want to act like you're hot. No, I appreciate that. No, no, you don't appreciate that. I like your that. gimmick, kid. You know, but I, no, I love it. I love it. No, you don't love it, first of all. And it is disrespectful somewhat to be drinking coffee or tea while you're in the middle of an interview. I don't know if you do that all the time. But I, I, I got to stay awake on TSN. I need my caffeine. <laughs> Wait a second here. 
Wow, you know, I, I, I don't know, I'm offended by that. Anyway, uh, I, I've actually, this last three minutes that we've done is perhaps the, uh, the most enjoyable three minutes I've done in uh, 2014. And I'm looking forward to saying goodbye so I can go back to being the nice guy that apparently you accused me of being. Uh, I'm sure you've been accused of a lot worse. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and uh, I, I got to say, anyway, happy holidays to you. Uh, look forward to when you actually are, you know, when you have an opponent, when you have a fighter coming back on this show and, uh, and talking about uh, looking ahead to that fight. I'll be here. Shalom.